Hello and welcome. Through this short talk, we're going to give you an overview of the work of the Institute of Conservation and how we work to support professional conservators throughout their careers. Through the presentation, we'll run through who we are and what we do, give you an outline of ICON's work in setting and maintaining standards for professional practice, give you a short introduction to ICON accreditation and why it's useful for you to be aware of now, and finally, to highlight the support available through ICON for students and emerging conservation professionals. So first off, who we are and what we do. The Institute of Conservation is the professional body for all those working to conserve cultural heritage. We are a charity and a limited company and are governed by a board of trustees formed of both professional conservators as well as co-opted members who represent other areas of professional practice. The trustees work to ensure that ICON continue to meet the needs of professional conservators. ICON was formed in 2005 through the merger of five different conservation organisations to be the body to represent all conservation professionals, regardless of their specialism or area of practice. What this means is that we have more of an opportunity to support cross-disciplinary working across the conservation profession, but also it enables us to advocate more effectively for the profession as a whole. So what do we do? Broadly speaking, our work is split into three key areas. First, it's about setting the standards in conservation practice. So we set and maintain the professional standards and judgment and ethics, which define professional practice for conservation professionals. And these standards underpin much of the work that we do, including ICON accreditation, which we'll talk about in more detail later. Secondly, we represent conservation professionals. So whilst we're not a union, we advocate for conservation professionals through responding to consultations, working with policymakers, and ensuring that conservators are represented in key stakeholder groups and committees. In doing so, we ensure that our work is underpinned by the views of our members. And finally, through the groups and networks, we offer a huge range of networking and training opportunities. Moving on to the groups and networks in more detail. So the groups and networks are at the heart of what ICON does. There are 16 specialist groups, six cross-disciplinary networks, and currently two national groups and networks. The groups and networks are led by volunteers who give up their time to create high quality training events, conferences, workshops, and lectures, develop networking opportunities, so the chance for you to meet and talk with your peers and professionals in your area of practice, and finally, to advocate for and represent the views of specialists in your area. Many of these groups have student or emerging professional representatives to ensure that your views are taken into account of through the group's work. If there is one network that you should all consider joining, that is the Emerging Professionals Network. Formed by emerging professionals for emerging professionals, they operate to support the needs of early career professionals through organising networking events and training, such as in developing portfolios and job interview skills, as well as offering you a forum to talk with people who are in the same position as you as they develop their careers. Hello and welcome. Through this short talk, we're going to give you an overview of the work of the Institute of Conservation and how we work to support professional conservators throughout their careers. Through the presentation, we'll run through who we are and what we do, give you an outline of ICON's work in setting and maintaining standards for professional practice, give you a short introduction to ICON accreditation and why it's useful for you to be aware of now, and finally, to highlight the support available through ICON for students and emerging conservation professionals. Next, we're going to move on to talk about ICON's role in setting and maintaining the standards for the conservation profession. The professional standards came about through the work of the Conservation Forum in 1993, who worked to develop a common set of standards that could be applied to all professional conservators regardless of their area of practice, type of role or stage in their career. There are five standards alongside professional judgment and ethics which effectively follow the life cycle of a conservation project. These are divided into 37 individual criteria but broadly can be grouped into Standard 1, Assessment of Cultural Heritage, so your first assessment when presented with a project. Standard 2, Options and Strategies, the steps you take to identify the variant options available to you. 
standard three conservation measures. So what it is that you do and the quality of your treatment or conservation decisions. Standard four, organization and management. So your approach to organizing your work. And standard five, continuing professional development, how you reflect and learn and stay on top of developments in your area of practice. And finally, there are professional judgment and ethics which transcend all five professional standards. The professional standards and judgment and ethics criteria should be viewed alongside the novice to expert scale. This is what we use to understand someone's level of practice against the standards. And this is assessed against knowledge, standard of practice, autonomy, complexity, and the context in which the work is being completed. So the levels are novice or just starting, beginner or qualified. So this is where you'd hope to be by the time you finish your programs. Competent or practicing, so that's someone who's graduated and had a number of years of professional experience. And then proficient, so or experienced. So this is where you should hope to get to in a few years after graduating. And this is the level against which we assess ICON accreditation. There's also an expert level. However, we haven't shown that here as we don't have any expectations for individuals to practice at that level necessarily. Another useful document for you to become familiar with is the ICON Ethical Guidance. Developed by ICON members and adopted by the Board of Trustees in 2020, the guidance is formed of two key sections. First, the principles of conservation. So these are the 13 broad statements defining the ethical approach to items of cultural heritage. And secondly, the commentary on the principles. So these are short analyses of the fundamental ideas expressed by each principle and how to apply them to your area of practice. The ethical guidance is not binding, but it's a very useful tool for you to look at to help shape and influence your conservation decision making. And the final document I wanna draw your attention to is the ICON Code of Conduct. So the Code of Conduct states the general principles and obligations governing the behavior of ICON's members, including members who are volunteering or in training. And this should be read in conjunction with the complaint procedure and the ICON professional standards and judgment and ethics. This process is here to ensure that members are here to appropriate levels of practice and when viewed alongside ICON accreditation is the way in which we provide members of the public and those commissioning conservation services with the reassurance that their objects and collections are being taken care of. Hello and welcome. Through this short talk, we're going to give you an overview of the work of the Institute of Conservation and how we work to support professional conservators throughout their careers. Through the presentation, we'll run through who we are and what we do, give you an outline of ICON's work in setting and maintaining standards for professional practice, give you a short introduction to ICON accreditation and why it's useful for you to be aware of now, and finally, to highlight the support available through ICON for students and emerging conservation professionals. The next thing I want to talk to you about is ICON accreditation, so what the process entails, who it's for, and why it should matter to you now. So ICON accreditation was introduced in 2000 and it was developed by professional conservators to provide a common framework by which all professional conservators could be assessed. It demonstrates that regardless of the route someone has taken to get there, that all professional conservators who have been through the process are practicing to a high standard. It's importantly a retrospective process. It's used to verify what you have done in the past and is backed up with evidence. And over the course of the last 20 years since ICON accreditation was introduced, around 1,100 people have become accredited members of ICON. So what does the process involve? So we won't talk about this in great depth, but just want to quickly outline the process. So the first step is preparation to apply. So this is about ensuring that you're familiar with the process and have enough evidence to start the application. There isn't a minimum requirement in terms of length of experience. It's about whether you've had the chance to build up the experience and importantly the evidence in order to be ready to submit your application. And so a good rule of thumb is that this will take around five years post-graduation. However, for some it may be more and others it may be less. It'll all depend on your own individual circumstances. You'll then need to submit an application which outlines around five projects that you've worked on and between them that address the professional standards and judgment and ethics criteria to the proficient level. 
The application will then be reviewed by the accreditation committee, so the group of accredited conservators who work to support and assess people on their journey towards becoming ICON accredited members. All going well, your application will then be passed to two accredited conservators who will undertake a one-day workplace assessment where you will talk about your projects and identify how you're working and addressing the professional standards. They'll then write a report, which is then going to be reviewed again by the accreditation committee, who then ultimately have the say on whether or not someone is accredited. So why does this matter now? Well, if you're able to effectively plan your professional journey, it's important to have an understanding of where you want to get to. So, as we were saying before, to become an accredited member of ICON, you need to show how you're working to the professional standards at the proficient level. So what this means is you're going to be an experienced professional who routinely makes good conservation decisions, is able to deal with complex projects, and able to draw out your autonomy in your decision making. Accreditation isn't for an elite group of practitioners, rather it's there to ensure that all professional conservators, regardless of background or area of practice, are working to the same high standard. So breaking this down against the novice to expert scale, this is about knowledge, so having a depth of understanding of your discipline and area of practice. It's about standards, so achieving a fully acceptable standard routinely. Autonomy, so able to take full responsibility for your own work and that of others where appropriate. Complexity, so you're able to deal with complex situations holistically and confidently. And context, so you see the overall picture and how individual actions fit within it. It might seem very daunting to you and you might not know where to start. However, there really is no right or wrong way. However, now you have an idea of what you want to achieve, you can now start planning your professional journey. It's inevitable that we all have to follow the opportunities as they arise, particularly when opportunities might be more limited. However, don't let that put you off planning. There are lots of things you can be doing to develop your professional skills. So this is my first message and what I'm going to run through for the rest of this section, which is fundamentally about taking control of your own professional development. Remember, it's about you, your own professional development, not that of your employer or workplace or lecturers. It's a holistic process. So it doesn't just relate to your conservation practice, but your wider professional skills. It's variable, so the steps you take to develop your own practice might depend on the resources you have available, your preferred learning style, or what you need to learn. And finally, it's reflective, so it's built on what you've learned in the past and what works best for you. So if we're going to start going through it from the beginning, the first thing you should be doing now is assess where you are now. So this means you should take the time to first go through the professional standards and work out where you are. Think about projects you've worked on and try and think about what standards you might have addressed through these projects. And for some of you, you might not have addressed very many of them so far, but that's fine. You can use the self-assessment form on the ICON website to help you do this. Spend some time going through it and try and think about all of your experiences and don't worry if they're not perfect at this stage. This is about thinking where you are now and whether there are any gaps that you need to think about filling and then think about how you're going to fill them. So once you've done this, you could then look at the novice to expert scale and start thinking about what level you might be practicing at. And again, really don't worry if you're novice or beginner in lots of areas. It's very likely to be down to the opportunities you've had so far. The important thing is you, that you're honest with yourself. Not overly harsh, but honest. So once you've got an idea of where you are, the next thing is to plan. So use the CPD log on the ICON website to start thinking about what your goals should be. Take into account what I was speaking about before, about this being tailored to your own particular needs and your resources. So for example, as well as attending a course, you could be thinking about identifying opportunities for short periods of work experience or talking with other professionals through ICONS groups and networks. Do spend some time to do this. This will help you in setting your goals. And for the best of us, if we don't write it down, we know it doesn't happen. So the next thing is to make sure that you take the time to follow up on these plans, but at the same time accept that plans change and what was once possible might no longer be feasible. And if that's the case, then that's fine. Reevaluate whether this is something you still need to be doing or think about is there a different way that you could be looking at the issue. And finally, reflect. 
So thinking about how it worked, was this the best thing for you to do? Do you need to do anything else? Remember that sort of CPD never stops. So no matter where you are in your career, there's always something to learn. All professionals are required to show that they've got a good grasp of their own professional development. So taking into account everything we've spoken about before with respect to ICON accreditation and how to plan your professional development, everyone's journey is going to be different. So this is just an example of what your journey could look like post-graduation. So year one would be about continuing to assess where you are. So taking the time out to do that self-assessment, identifying your practice against the standards and novice to expert scale, and consider the gaps and plan for how to fill them. You could also consider working with a mentor through the pathway scheme at this stage. Years two and three would be more of the same. So thinking about your practice and actioning your CPD goals and reflecting on what your new goals and targets should be. Thinking with the stands at the back of your mind to help you plan. By the time you get to year four, you'd be thinking about starting to write your application or at least parts of it. And it's likely that by this time you'll have some good projects that you can draw from. You might also consider coming to an accreditation clinic or really start focusing on accreditation with your pathway mentor. And then leading into year five, where you'd be aiming to go through the process. And so, as I said, no one's journey is going to be the same. And if it takes longer, that's fine. It's really going to be down to having had the opportunity to get experience of the right projects. But hopefully now with your strong ownership of your own continuing professional development, you'll be on top of this. Hello and welcome. Through this short talk, we're going to give you an overview of the work of the Institute of Conservation and how we work to support professional conservators throughout their careers. Through the presentation, we'll run through who we are and what we do, give you an outline of ICON's work in setting and maintaining standards for professional practice, give you a short introduction to ICON accreditation and why it's useful for you to be aware of now, and finally, to highlight the support available through ICON for students and emerging conservation professionals. So in the final part of the talk today, we'll just be highlighting some of the key support that we're able to offer for students and emerging conservation professionals. So the first thing is the Emerging Professionals Network, and we've spoken about this before, but it is going to be a really useful group for you to engage with giving you the opportunity to attend their events, to participate in the network actively, and to meet and talk with other professionals who are in the same position as you. The Student Mentoring Programme is newly launched and is open to all student members of ICON in the final year of their courses. And places are limited and allocated through an application process, however, for those who are able to get onto the programme, it offers the chance for emerging professionals to be mentored by professional conservators, giving them the opportunity to reflect on their ongoing professional development and learn from what a more experienced professional has done and hear about their professional journey. So that's certainly something to look out for. There's the ICON Internship Program. So this is a structured program um, for new graduates or those looking to enter the conservation profession to develop their practical skills and improve their employability. Since 2006, 185 people have started their careers with an ICON internship. And as I said, it's a structured program with a host, a tax-free stipend, and the support of a dedicated intern advisor. And placements take place across the country throughout the year and are advertised on the ICON website whenever they're available. Then there's a continuing professional development log, which we referred to when we were talking about planning your continuing professional development. So this is on the ICON website. It's available for all members to use to help you actively plan your professional development as well as being able to return and monitor your targets. So that's certainly something I would suggest people look at. And then last but not least, there's the newly launched Student Project Gallery, which is open to all student members of ICON to promote your work on the ICON website helping you to raise your profile and demonstrate your skills and knowledge to your peers and even prospective employers. So that's certainly something to take a look at. So what are the most important messages to take away? So first off, do take time to become familiar with the ICON professional standards, complete that self-assessment and get into good practices with your continuing professional development. And the second is to grow your professional networks, in particular by engaging with the specialist groups, but also the Emerging Professionals Network. 
These are going to be your peers throughout your career and it's a great opportunity to think about how you can effectively support each other as you develop your career in conservation. Thank you for listening. Remember, we're also here to help you in your continuing professional development. So do get in touch with us at any time by dropping us an email at training at icon.org.uk. Thank you for listening.